Let us take an example that arises in the context of some communication systems. Let's say we have certain mobile towers. So these are the mobile towers and there is a cell phone that is receiving signals from these mobile towers. So here we are considering a system where a user can receive signals from multiple uh, towers or base stations. So I call them base stations. So let's say there, there are n which is the number of base stations and there are m such users. So m is the number of users. So users means a cell phone for example. So there are m cell phones. And let us say that the transmit power which is the power at which this signal is being transmitted by a tower is denoted by P subscript I superscript J. So here I is from 1 to M which is the number of users so this is the superscript denotes the user index and the superscript denotes the base station index. So J is from 1 to N. So there are N base stations and M users. The transmit power of a mobile tower of the jth mobile tower to the ith user is given by or is denoted by P I J. And likewise uh, there is some attenuation of this power. So whatever power is transmitted it gets attenuated and the channel gain is denoted by G I J. Uh, if you are not from communications background you don't need to know much. I am just saying that there is a power at which a signal is being transmitted and there is an attenuation that occurs because of which the received signal power is less then the transmit signal power and because of that the received power or the power at which the signal is received at the ith user. So this is at the ith user is given by. So what happens is that the signal power transmit signal power gets multiplied by the channel gain. And this is the received power from the first mobile tower or from the first base station. Then from the second base station it receives this much power and so on till the nth base station. So this is the total power that is received. So this is the total received power at the ith user. So this by the way this is called coherent combining but if you don't have communications background you can just ignore this terminology. Uh, so then our goal so there can be several problems that can be formulated now in this system. So there is this transmit power and there is channel gain. The channel gain is given to us. This is given to us. So channel gain is let's say fixed or whatever it is we can measure it and therefore it is given to us we want to decide the transmit power. right? So this is the optimization variable. Now what can, what can be the problems that we can consider in this context? One example could be that we want to minimize transmit power. So we want to choose the transmit powers such that we minimize the transmit power. Of course minimizing transmit power does not mean that we transmit at zero power because then no one will get good enough signals. So what we do is we can say that we subject it to. So we minimize the transmit power while respecting certain constraints. What are those constraints? We say that it is subject to 
certain minimum received power constraints right so some minimum received power constraints so this problem how do we formulate this problem so we can formulate this problem as minimization of so minimization is over all p i j where i is from 1 to m and j is from 1 to n so the minimization the objective function is summation i equal to 1 to m and j equal to 1 to n so this is a summation of p i j this is the total power that has been the total transmit power across all the base stations and then this is subject to this is subject to summation over j 1 to n p i j g i j right so we have summed this over j so now this is for written for every i so we require that this is greater than or equal to gamma i and gamma i you can think of it as the threshold the threshold power for user i so user i needs certain minimum amount of power in order to carry out its activities let's say browse the internet and that is the minimum amount of power that is required and we are making sure that the received power is at least greater than or equal to gamma i right so this is the problem i was i should add one more constraint which is that pij is greater than or equal to 0 for i equal to 1 to m and j equal to 1 to n so this is an example of a problem which we have formulated and you can see that this is indeed a linear program because the constraints and the objective are all linear in the optimization variable pij right so this is just an example of how you formulate problems given certain objectives and constraints so here we were minimizing the total power that is transmitted while ensuring that each user gets some minimum amount of power that is stipulated uh, there is another way of or another formulation that is that can be considered which is that of fair allocation so that is another formulation which is so fair allocation is related to the idea that it is not necessary that everyone is satisfied with the minimum power that they are getting each user actually wants as much power as it can get but when we do that we cannot ignore the other users so every user we should fairly allocate the power so that every user gets uh, its fair share however there is a in this case we cannot transmit a lot of power because if we transmit a lot of power then we have a certain power budget which we will get over so we don't want to uh, violate the power budget constraints so the fair allocation idea is that we maximize the received power at the worst user so worst in terms of the user that is giving getting the minimum power so in other words i can say this as i want to maximize again the optimization variables are pij so i want to maximize the received power at the user which is getting the minimum received power so what is the minimum received power minimum over i of the received power so j equal to 1 to n p i j g i j so remember that this part was the received power and therefore this whole thing is the power the minimum received power
at any of the users. So who, uh, among all the users, whichever user is getting the least amount of power, this minimum is equal to that received power. So we are maximizing this quantity. So we are essentially making sure that the user which is getting the least amount of power, that power, that power level which is getting is maximized. Right? So this is called the fair allocation strategy because we don't want any user to be left behind. We are catering for the worst user. So whichever user is the worst, we are catering for that user. And of course, the obvious solution to this is that you pump in a lot of power, but that is not acceptable because we can put some constraint which says that Pij summation over i equal to 1 to m is less than equal to p max of j which is basically the budget the power budget at base station j so in this case we are saying that each base station cannot just pump in lot of power it has a power budget and it can only pump in as much power as its power budget allows and while respecting this constraint as well as the positivity or non-negativity constraint, we are saying that we want to maximize the power at the worst user, among all the users, among all the n users. Right? So this is the fair allocation strategy. And this was the, the first one was the minimization of transmit power strategy. So here we are making sure that each user gets the minimum amount and we make sure that we save on the power. On the other hand, the fair allocation strategy, we don't save on the power. We actually try to pump in as much power as we can while making sure that whichever user is getting the least amount of power, their power is maximized. Now, the first one we have seen was a linear programming problem. But what can we say about the second one? What kind of problem is this? What kind of objective function is this? We can obviously see that this and this are both linear. But what can we say about the objective function? What is this objective function min over i summation? So if you remember, we said that the pointwise maximum over affine functions was convex. Conversely, pointwise minimum, so this is... Point-wise minimum over affine and therefore what is point-wise minimum over affine? You can verify that it is concave. So this is actually a concave function. So we are maximizing a concave function or equivalently we, we can say that this problem or this objective can be written as minimization pij of the negative of this, right? Of the negative of this. J equal to 1 to N. P I J G I J. Right? So whenever we have a maximization problem, we can equivalently consider the negative, the minimization of the negative objective function. And again, we can take the min inside. So we can write this as min over P I J. and max over minus of j equal to 1 to n p i j g i j right so please understand what has happened here uh, by the way there is a negative sign missing so let's say that this value is p this maximum value is p then p can be written as minus of minimum of minus of this right so there is a minus sign outside because we have taken a minus sign inside, so there is also a minus sign outside the minimization operator. The power at which this is minimized or maximized would remain the same, but the value will be negative of this. Right? So this max min problem, we have written it as min of max. Max is over i, min is over p i j. Right? Now this was a maximization of a concave function. On the other hand, this is minimization of a, so this is convex. We have already seen this, that this is convex, 
because this is point wise maximum over affine so point wise maximum of affine is convex okay so now this we have verified that this is a convex optimization problem or if we write it as a maximization then it is a concave maximization problem so both are fine so we are fine but uh, it is interestingly you can see that this problem is also a linear program so this problem is a linear program so how do we show that this is a linear program we have to use some transformation here to show that this although it is convex we have recognized that it is a convex program we have to show some transformation to show that it is actually a linear program and therefore it can be solved using linear programming algorithms so how do we show that this is a linear program we have to use a particular uh, manipulation we have seen many manipulations like change of variables introduction of new variables elimination of variables so which of the techniques we should use so generally as i said earlier the most important technique that we will have in our arsenal is the so called epigraph trick so whenever you don't know which technique to use most likely the answer is epigraph trick you should always try it so let's say let's try that here so let's so if you remember the epigraph trick was something like this if you have minimize f of x then you can write it as minimize t such that f of x was less than equal to t right this was the epigraph trick looking at it this way it seems very innocent but let's see what we get if we apply it so here we have minimize over pij and then we write it as t such that maximum over i j equal to 1 2 n pij gij right so we are saying that this is less than equal to t now what does this imply we are saying that uh, did i miss a minus sign yes this is maximum of minus of this yeah so we are saying that maximum of something maximum of something is less than equal to t so there are a bunch of values the maximum of them is less than equal to t which means that all of those are less than equal to t so this is equal to minimum over pij t and all of these j equal to 1 to n pij gij is less than equal to t and this holds for all i between 1 and m right so this holds for all i and in addition to that we also also had other linear constraints so in addition to had to this we had this constraint that pij summation over i is less than equal to p max of j and pij is non negative so combined we can see that this is a linear constraint this is a linear constraint this is a linear constraint objective is also linear and therefore this is indeed a linear program so we have been able to convert this convex optimization problem whose objective was convex it was a minimization or maximization of several affine functions into a linear programming problem right and linear programming problem we have already seen that there are several algorithms that can be used so all those algorithms can be applied to this problem and can be solved so this is the power of manipulation i think i missed the fact that t is also a variable here so in this case both pij and t would be variables so in summary we have seen an example of how to apply or how to formulate uh, linear programming problems so we had seen we have seen an example where we have formulated a problem and it turns out to be linear in one case and it turns out to be convex but we were able to apply some manipulation in order to convert it into a linear programming problem 
among all of the optimization problems linear programming problems are the simplest usually the algorithms for solving linear programming problems are the fastest among all the convex optimization algorithms so it is beneficial if we can recognize that a problem is linear programming problem and solve it using a linear programming optimization algorithm rather than a more sophisticated one